morning and uh, welcome everyone trust that uh, all of you are doing well yeah. it's good to be back in this class where we talk about um, the keys to supernatural ministry bc 205 so we'll pray and we'll get into god's word i want to request someone from our online batch to please go ahead and lead in prayer uh can you hear me yeah so sam uh, yeah. i'm not able to hear you okay can i pray We thank you, our Lord and Master Jesus Christ, for ushering us into another session. This session we commit it into your mighty hand. We ask for your guidance, your understanding throughout what we will be learning. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Uh, Kofi, thank you for praying. Hope you can hear us clearly. We are having uh, some audio challenges here. Uh, all right, but we'll go ahead. We'll just go ahead with our study. Okay, so we can uh, begin. I've shared my screen with the content for today. Okay, good morning once again, everyone. And uh, let's um, move forward with our study of the supernatural here. In the last class, we went through some biblical principles and truth regarding why we give importance to the supernatural. And it was quite evident that Jesus himself gave importance to the supernatural. At the time when John the Baptist was uh, in doubt, he told him, come and see uh, the works. Go and tell uh, John about all the things that I am doing. And it was a list of miracles, supernatural work that Jesus did. Uh, we also saw how, you know, he said in uh, John 10, he said, like, even if you don't believe me, believe the works that I do, John 5, John 10. We see in various places, he spoke about looking at the miracles because the miracles gave evidence that he is the Messiah. So miracles are very important. We cannot talk about the ministry of Jesus without talking about 
miracles and we also recognize that it hasn't stopped okay, miracles have not stopped even till today our god is a god who works miracles which is why we are trying to understand what the supernatural is and what supernatural ministry is so let's just um, share our ideas before i get into chapter 1 and i want to know what according to you is supernatural ministry supernatural ministry okay something above the natural is uh, the supernatural true yes so the human mind cannot grasp uh, what god is doing that's true what else is supernatural ministry the online batch is free to answer as well okay it has to be from god and uh, humanly it's impossible that supernatural ministry yes yes please okay so it shows how great our god is we've seen that last time as well um, that the miracles were pointing to god and god's greatness so it makes us more interested in god and his glory yeah so that that is another reason why it's important lucy says it glorifies god yes supernatural ministry glorifies god okay uh, and uh, what are some why but why is it when supernatural ministry is so important why do people have an objection to supernatural ministry Are there any objections? Yes, sir. Friend. Mm. So we we understand that some people don't believe. Why? Why is it that they, they don't believe? Why is it that they feel it's not necessary or not important? What could be OK, yeah. So a good point for some of the people, they're worried about believing in uh, false manifestations or false occurrences, false um, ministers of God. So there's that caution. We are scared. We don't want to believe. Yeah, that could be one of the reasons why people don't believe. Uh, yes so some feel manipulated they're not sure if it was real that's a struggle yeah we understand that uh yes sir warren warren wants to say something i'll come back to the class yeah, yes yes uh, some some people uh, think that uh, the supernatural ministry was only during jesus's time and then it doesn't it doesn't exist anymore so uh, it ended when when uh, sorry when jesus died yes true so um there's this school of thought as well where people believe that it everything stopped with the life and ministry of jesus it did not continue after that okay but we'll we'll see as we are uh, studying about the supernatural that we don't find any um any instruction in scripture that says the supernatural stopped with jesus simply because when we look at the book of Acts, Jesus said, wait, you will be empowered by the Holy Spirit and you will be my witnesses uh, in Jerusalem and the surrounding regions to the ends of the earth. We find the apostles, the believers of the early church demonstrating the supernatural. Jesus is not there. Supernatural is still continuing. How long did it continue? We can say that it kept continuing we don't see any reference to it stopping even when paul writes to the corinthian church paul does his ministry he goes across um, you know the regions of uh, asia minor and europe he's writing to them about the supernatural the corinthian church uh, gifts of the holy spirit he tells them this is how you must operate in the gifts of the holy spirit what does that tell us the supernatural was very much there it never stopped after jesus left so after the bible bible times or you know the new testament times the epistle time people say it stopped but based on what are we saying that 
the miracle stopped. There are no scripture references that tell us it stopped. Um, in fact, when we read the book of uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the evidence to this theory that the miracles have stopped, we don't find scriptural evidence. But yes, there are people. I think the, uh, the scripture on which people base this theory, it's sometimes called as uh, cessationalism, meaning miracles have ceased. That's the theory, cessationalism. Many people believe in it. They base it on a scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where uh, Paul writes, when the perfect has come, right? all these gifts, they will cease. They will stop existing. So when what is perfect has come. So according to a lot of people, that perfect they refer to as scriptures. When the scriptures were put together, the canonization of scripture, they say that is the perfection. It has already come. So the Bible says all these things will cease to exist, the, the gifts of the spirit. But I mean, it's a standalone scripture like, we don't really have solid evidence to say from scripture that miracles have stopped. Okay, so yes, some people don't believe. They say it stopped with Jesus' times. Thank you, Warren, for sharing uh, and the others as well. What are some other common objections? Why, why is it that people don't believe in the supernatural? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're saying when when people think of the supernatural, there's also the dark realm and witchcraft and you know black magic and other things that people do. So uh, we don't want to have anything to do with those things. It's scary. So then people don't want to think about the supernatural or uh, believe in the supernatural. Okay, because of the bad name that. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So Akhil is saying hardness of heart. Very hard. Like people just don't want to believe, no matter what God does. Yeah. True. So these are some things. Um, all these points that we've shared are true. These are some of the common objections common objections. Um, but we've understood that Jesus gave importance to the supernatural, plus uh, the scripture does not tell us that the supernatural has stopped, which is why we can continue learning about the supernatural and pray, ask God for the supernatural to be demonstrated through our lives, each one of us, through each one of us. So that's what we're going to talk about in the first section which is the possibility of the supernatural, um, more like the possibility of a supernatural life and ministry. Just the way Jesus had a supernatural life and ministry, every single one of us can have a supernatural life and ministry. We must expect it. We must um, grow in it. So right at the start, when we look at the ministry of Jesus, we find that he did not limit the supernatural to himself. He empowered his disciples. Let's quickly look at uh, some passages of scripture. Matthew chapter 10, verses 1, and then 7 and 8. 1, then 7 and 8. If uh, one of us can read it, that will be helpful. Please use the mic. For the benefit of the online students. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. 7 and 8. As you go, preach the message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, Freely you have received, freely give. Amen. So 
here are the disciples the 12 disciples whom jesus is sending to do the work of the ministry what kind of ministry is he expecting from the disciples supernatural ministry because it was if it was only about teaching the truth of the kingdom jesus would not tell them that i give you authority you go you know drive out demons and cleanse the leper heal the sick he wouldn't say things like that but the expectation is that just the way jesus moved in supernatural ministry the disciples also must move in supernatural ministry very clear very clear and in fact this is before the lord jesus completed the work of redemption on the cross so we can also say that it is a foretaste of what would come after he you know dies and uh, is resurrected and then the power of god comes upon his disciples and they do the work you know mighty work for the kingdom way before all that there is still supernatural ministry where he is telling the disciples i give you authority you go and do all these supernatural works so jesus wanted his disciples to move in the supernatural very clear let's look at luke 10 luke 10 is another passage where he is asking people to go out he's commissioning uh, people to go and do the work luke chapter 10 verse 1 and then 17 through 19 luke chapter 10 verse 1 after this the lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead mm. of him to every town and place where he was about to go the 72 returned with joy and said lord even the demons submit to us in your name mm. he replied i saw satan fall like lightning from heaven i mm. have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy nothing mm. will harm you amen so notice initially it was the 12 disciples and jesus told them i'm sending you to do ministry do supernatural ministry now in luke 10 he's sending 70 others they're not the 12 some other followers of jesus who obviously they were with him and they were following him at all times what kind of ministry does he want these people to do he's sending out the 70 others uh, and when they come back so verses uh, 17 through 19 yeah we see them return with joy and they say lord even the demons are subject to us in your name so what kind of ministry did, did they do they cast out demons 70 others supernatural ministry and jesus is saying i saw satan fall like lightning what does it mean see satan already has fallen from heaven long ago but when jesus is saying i saw satan fall like lightning he's saying wonderful ministry you all did amazing ministry the devil is defeated like that you've done ministry how demonstrating the power of god casting out demons destroying demonic assignments over people's lives imagine 70 of them went we don't know what and all miracles took place but they are also coming back joyfully and they're saying god you know jesus we can't believe it demons are subject to your name by your name we cast out demons they're excited and jesus is applauding their ministry and saying good job very very well done you've demonstrated the power of god but then of course he goes on later and he says don't rejoice uh, you know in the results of the ministry we we need to place our identity in the fact that we now belong to god rejoice that your name is written in the uh, you know in in heaven so what is the point the point is identity should be in the right place my identity should not be in the fact that i'm a pastor i'm a leader i'm a this i'm a that this is my ministry why yeah all those things are true but that's not my foundation now tomorrow let's say for a season god calls me to do something else 
nobody knows i'm a pastor there nobody knows i'm a teacher there nothing what will happen to my confidence what will happen to who i am it should not be affected i should be rejoicing i'm a child of god my name is written in heaven you know so i'm happy about that so that second part of what jesus was saying was identity must be in me don't put your identity in the ministry it's you know shaky ground that's not where we must derive our confidence okay but the point the point we come back to the point the 70 others also received authority from jesus to do supernatural ministry so it's quite clear jesus is repeating uh, commissioning his disciples to do supernatural ministry so today if we say no i am only going to go and i am only going to teach god's word there will be no miracles there will be no healings there will be nothing that you can point to and say it's supernatural but i am going to teach the bible cover to cover a to z we see a different pattern in the way jesus commissioned people to do ministry and of course you know we have the early church as a great and mighty example of the way they function supernatural great grace was upon them god did many signs wonders through the hands of the apostles we read scriptures like that in the book of acts okay so this is the pattern jesus sends us for supernatural ministry in mark chapter 9 there is another man uh, who is doing miracles you know he he is um, um demonstrating the supernatural verse 38 to 40 could someone read it please mark 9 verse 38 to 40 mark 9 38 to 40 but jesus said to them you do not know what you ask are you able to drink the cup and i sorry are you reading chapter 9 but jesus said do not forbid him <laughs> now john answered him saying teacher we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demon demons in your name and we forbid him because he does not follow us mm, but mm. jesus said do not forbid him for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterward speak evil of me mm. for he who is yes. not against us is on our side okay so here is a man who is not part of the 12 or part of the uh, 70 and the disciples of jesus are noticing this person casting out demons and what did they try doing stop don't do it it's you know we have the id card <laughs> you are not part of us don't do all these things but jesus says no if he is doing the works of god right by the power of god he is one of us don't stop him so there was an unknown person unnamed person unrecognized person demonstrating god's power and the answer that jesus had for the disciples is don't stop him god's kingdom is being demonstrated through that man why because he believed and it was happening even in his life and ministry so we can understand how jesus looked at um, supernatural ministry and wanted supernatural ministry for his disciples and uh, when the lord jesus was ascending you know we know he uh, gave us before he went up to be with the father he gave us the great commission and he said you know you go into all the world make disciples but for us to do the work of god we know he gave us the authority why do we need authority he gave authority to his disciples also to go and demonstrate supernatural work similarly he has given us the authority and uh, he told us go make disciples of all nations uh, baptizing them you know in in my name and also teaching them everything that i have taught you so he taught about supernatural ministry he asked all his disciples he was happy 
when people were demonstrating supernatural ministry. And so we know that attached to the Great Commission is that supernatural ministry. Uh, even in Mark chapter 16, we know that you know, when Jesus says, go, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, freely you have received, freely you give. So he has called us to supernatural ministry and it's part of the Great Commission. Uh, and this in itself shows us that he wants us to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's consider uh, the Lord Jesus and his sonship glory. We know that, yes, please, yes. Uh, we were just learning about the fivefold ministry. Yeah. Now, my question is uh, Does supernatural ministry supersede the fivefold ministry or? The supernatural ministry enable us in the fivefold ministry in whichever field that we are called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they are not separate, Akhil. So supernatural ministry, um, because we are studying about it, we have kind of uh, given it a title and we are trying to discuss the demonstration of God's power. But it's not a separate thing. It's a part of any ministry that God calls us to do. If we take, for example, someone who is not in the fivefold ministry, in Acts chapter 6, we find um, Stephen, Philip, there are five volunteers in the church. But even for Stephen, it says, you know, he was a man who was demonstrating wonders. Uh, like he was moving in the supernatural. Part of any ministry, there is the supernatural. Similarly, if you extend it to the fivefold, there is demonstration of God's power. Uh, how do we look at it when we take up, let's say, um, somebody who is a, an evangelist? We may notice that there are many miracles, like the operation of uh, uh, healings, miracles, gift of faith. There will be more demonstration of that because people must put their faith in God. So evangelists, as you see, that anointing will operate more as far as the evangelist is concerned. Similarly, when you take up other fivefold ministry areas, depending on their calling, depending on the nature of the ministry, there is a supernatural anointing that will operate. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good question there. All right. So we move ahead. We were talking about sonship glory. We are looking at how Jesus viewed the supernatural ministry and how he gave importance to it. Uh, so first we said that it was Jesus who commissioned his disciples, the earlier ones, as well as us, and said, you go and uh, demonstrate the kingdom. This is a second thought that we must be clear about. We carry sonship glory just the way Jesus carried sonship glory. The Lord Jesus, when he came to the earth, we know the word became flesh. He dwelt among us and, you know, we beheld him. Uh, he was full of grace. He was full of truth. Uh, that's what the Bible says. And the first time he demonstrated a supernatural work. When was that? Anyone? Water into wine. Turning water into wine. John chapter 2, verse 11 there says that... Uh, he demonstrated the glory of God. He revealed the glory of God. How did he reveal the glory of God? By a supernatural work. Water turned into wine and the Bible says God's glory was manifested. Okay. So he manifested what we call as the sonship glory. The glory. There are, before Jesus came to the earth, he carried another glory. Heavenly glory. But when he was on the earth, in Philippians chapter 2, we know he left behind his heavenly glory. He became humbled himself to become a man and come. But as a man, he carried what is known as sonship glory. Now, as we continue to read about you know Jesus in John 17, verses 5 and 22. Can someone read it, please? John 17, verse 5 and 22. Five and two. Five two? John 17, 5 and 22. 22. 
John chapter 17 verse 5 and now father glorify me in your presence with the glory i had with you before the world began verse 22 i have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one hmm. so do you see that just before he is going to go to the father he says once again father you glorify me with that heavenly glory. So I'm going back. I'll take that glory again. But the glory which God gave Jesus on the earth, I am giving the glory to them. That sonship glory is what he gave you and me. So that we can be the children of God. We can walk together. We can also demonstrate the power of God through our lives. So the second second reason why we must demonstrate the supernatural is because we have received sonship glory. Jesus manifested that sonship glory and very clearly the Bible says that he gave it to us. Father, I've given it to them. You and I, we carry sonship glory okay, as believers. So that is something that we can operate in. Um, and we, we see that just the way Jesus was on the earth, we are supposed to be like that. That's what we are called to. Apostle John writes about this uh, in 1 John. And we are supposed to operate just the way Jesus operated. So in his sonship glory, if he operated by demonstrating God's power, every believer, every child of God should be working like that. As he was, so we are in this world. As he was, so we are in this world world even though jesus is not here all those who believe in jesus we must be walking the way jesus walked receiving of the sonship glory and demonstrating of the power of god not just the power of god even the virtues of god you now we read in second peter 1 3 that uh, uh, we can partake of the divine nature of god so in his character, in the way that Christ was, in every aspect, you and I can operate in the same way. He's made a provision for that. Now, if we ask, like, how can that be? Uh, will it happen? What about me? If you're a believer, you have the sonship glory. You are called to operate in the power of God, manifest the glory of God through miracles jesus manifested the glory through what a miracle okay and along with that even in the character of god share in the divine nature of god the virtues of god all this is possible and that's what jesus has called us to jesus asked us to go and do the work of the great commission jesus gave us such a glory now look at this we also have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. How did Jesus do his miracles? Through the Holy Spirit, isn't it? The power of God was present, we read in many places. The Holy Spirit was operating through the ministry of Jesus. And he told us, I'm going to the Father, but you shall do greater works than these. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is coming. He's the one who's going to empower us. So we have the empower, empowering of the Holy Spirit to demonstrate the supernatural. Uh, and more so, especially once we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Right? That's what Jesus said. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So when Jesus could demonstrate the supernatural through the Holy Spirit, we see uh, many examples like in uh, Luke 4, the passage of Luke 4, verse 18, when he goes to the synagogue, um, he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he goes on to state, so that you know I can, I can do this ministry, uh, heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free, preach the gospel. How? How to do all these things? 
the spirit of the lord is upon me meaning i carry the anointing anointing is what the power and the presence of the holy spirit through the power and the presence of the holy spirit i am going to do this ministry that's what jesus was saying in luke 4 verses 18 and 19 and then again acts 10:38 we read jesus of nazareth anointed he was anointed by god he was anointed by god and he went about doing good healing all those who were oppressed of the devil how did he heal those people anointed by god anointed what is anointed power in the presence of the holy spirit it was operating in the life of jesus once he cast out demons and people were looking at him like how did he do this how did he cast out the demons and we see in mark 12 verse 28 he tells them i did this by the spirit of god how to cast out a demon by the power of the holy spirit he was able to cast out the demon and he's saying look i did it by the spirit of god the kingdom of god is among you that's how jesus operated in the supernatural and he told us you shall receive power when we are baptized in the holy spirit we carry the same holy spirit right has anything changed with regard to the holy spirit did god you know grade him down in our times and say there'll be some features will be missing <laughs> okay you must press update or something no no same holy spirit same holy spirit who was there with jesus so today when you and i go we want to cast out a demon we want to pray for healing for the sick somewhere satan may put a voice in our head and say how much experience do you have you don't have any experience do you think this person will be set free do you think this person will be healed you can just stop that voice rebuke that voice in the name of jesus and say holy spirit has experience right from before creation he has experience revealing his power same holy spirit when jesus was ministering same holy spirit all these miracles that we read here he has witnessed it he has done it so i am not worried satan i rebuke you in the name of jesus i am empowered by the holy spirit and i shall be a witness to the power of god to the glory of god how many believers can do this two how many believers can do this by the power Every, of the holy spirit everybody 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 that's that's great that's wonderful all of us can demonstrate because we have the same holy spirit nothing has changed as far as his power and glory is concerned so amazing amazing the supernatural is for everyone is for everyone and all believers yes yes akil uh, sometimes mm. we uh, always say like you know we want more of the holy spirit we want yes, to be filled yes. with the holy spirit yes. so what is that in reference to okay so we want more of the holy spirit we want to be filled with the holy spirit so uh um i even i didn't understand this for a long time but then you know i heard this explanation and it made sense to me see when you and i come into the room once we've come we've come we won't say that oh nancy has come she's still coming because there'll be more of me left outside so there's no need for extra you know nancy to come inside the room because we are limited as people but when we talk about the holy spirit he is god he is god and he is immeasurable he is immeasurable so though he comes we can keep saying i want more of you and he can keep coming it's a little hard to grasp it like that but in other words he is not limited he is you know I, i don't know what the word is but uh, incredibly large or enormous so when we say he is come and we want more of him we want him to come uh, you know again and fill us it can happen because god can't be measured like that he's not limited so that's how it works right yeah how much we desire and how much we pull on the presence of god in our lives yeah there's a lot that is available when you when we look at some of the mighty men and women of god no it's uh, so interesting what they say people say thing uh, some of their quotes it says 
like even smith wigglesworth he saw uh, if i'm not wrong 11 uh, resurrections in his life and ministry but he also said something like you know god is still not done enough meaning god can do more when people believe more he i i was thinking like oh smith come on you're one of the best uh, ministers we can look to as far as the demonstration of god's power is concerned but why are you saying that one can believe more like people have not gone further their their belief has limited them there's so much more that one can believe and move into as long as they have faith for those things so that means there is so much more there is so much more that we have not even encountered and some of us afternoon batch uh, residential batch you were here when we did uh, uh, ministers of god god generals and we were talking about different people we were talking about you know the manifestations of miracles we also saw that video right like one uh, person who's on the bed bedridden and this man commands and he just jumps up like literally he's been bedridden for months and years uh, but he recovered like that even those who have experienced such miracles say there is so much more if we believe there is so much more of the power of god so the holy spirit is not limited his power is not limited it's all about us pressing in by faith and we'll see there are other keys also that we can consider so yeah so we've looked at the empowering of the holy spirit and then of course we have been given authority thank god you know jesus asked us to do the work of the great commission not without authority when he sent the people out the disciples even at that time we read he gave them authority to cast out demons he has given us the keys of the kingdom so i give you the keys of the kingdom what is the key it's the authority so here's the next point every believer carries authority whether we are using it or not that's a different question you know we can have authority but we can keep it in the cupboard and lock it and wonder why why nothing is happening why we are not using our authority but authority has been given to every believer i give you the keys of the kingdom all authority in heaven and earth is mine the great commission now you go you make disciples of all nations right so authority has been given to us so here is another reason why you and i can flow in the supernatural okay so uh, we've seen through these four specific things that one is jesus gave us the invitation to supernatural ministry he has given us the sonship glory empowered us by the holy spirit and vested authority upon us that you and i can operate in the supernatural so we'll talk more you know we'll keep uh, getting more out of this uh, and uh, yeah but for today i think we'll just wrap up if you have a question please let us know if not we'll go ahead and pray before we close our class can i just give a quick question here yes please warren you know uh, i mean i think this has been discussed before as well so we all have uh, the holy, we, we we all have the uh, we can all have the power of the holy spirit to to do all the supernatural works but then uh, um, should we be doing it because i mean uh, what happens does it not conflict with those who have been given the gifts and those who have been given like uh, uh, the calling for certain ministries Okay thank you uh, Warren for that question Answer is no it will not it will not restrict or interfere with others who have been given gifts see god is the giver of the gifts and he knows what gifts are needed in the church when we read romans 12 we see there that you know there are different kinds of gifts as per the requirement of the body similarly uh, 
when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you know other graces upon our lives, they're not conflicting, Warren. That's what I'm trying to say. If we all operate and demonstrate the supernatural, it will in fact contribute to uh, the work of God and the kingdom of God and not conflict. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. I was hoping you all will ask me this question, but uh, since you didn't, I'm only going to say. Uh, so what? how about like, if God has called us for the supernatural, why don't we see more of the supernatural through our lives? Correct, correct. We're limiting ourselves. That's where we're not seeing a demonstration. Yeah, we are not standing in that authority. We are not taking that authority. We are not inviting the Holy Spirit to, to come and work. So in all these ways, we are, if you want to put call it stopping. Yeah, it's available, just that we are not tapping into it. So that's the reason. But hopefully, now that we are studying about supernatural ministry, let's grow in it. Yeah. Mm. Resurrected. Mm. So uh, it won't like I will uh, reach my faith. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, I keep practicing. That. Yes, yes. So we'll we we'll learn about all this, uh, Vimal. One of the ways in which we will, um, if you want to call it, activate. Uh, the supernatural ministry is to keep stepping out, keep stepping, like take risks. You have to take risk, and um, that's how we will learn. That's how we will grow. Okay, right. So let's stop right here, and okay, great. Let's uh, close off with a word of prayer, and I request one of us here to please pray. Okay, Nelson is gonna pray. Lord, thank you for this class as we have been learning super, about supernatural classes, Lord. Let us to take stand, let us, let us to take risk, Lord, come into the faith and access to the supernatural work of your own, Lord. As you have given us the commandment, you have given us the authority and the keys to do, Lord. Lord, lead us to get more intimacy with you and Lord, in the relationship as a father and son, Lord, we will do your work with mighty, Lord. I submit this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. We'll see you all next week.